Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today we are looking at the Jaeger, and yeah, let's just jump into it. So the base Jaeger is a Corvette carry, it's 18 CP, and it carries four Corvettes, which makes it equally as, you know, viable as, say, running destroyers, uh, with the added benefits, got increased HP and that and the likes. So it's pretty decent in the role of a carrier. And uh, with the new command systems, it, uh, I believe I can't click on any of these in this view. Right, let's go back out to normal blueprints. I don't have the anti-ships. We'll go to the other thing for the anti-ship. So it has got Strategic Strike 2, which is the sort of angled one, a bit more difficult to use than just a giant circle. However, definitely completely and utterly usable. It has the max strategic strike targets, which I personally still don't think is worth running. And you have increased hit rate of aircraft carrying out the strategic strike by 2% times 4. So you get an 8% little bonus there of hit rate, which is actually quite nice. On its Corvette loading system, it is probably one of the most interesting ones because part of the anti-meta fleet, as it will... Uh, where you tend to see a lot of frigate destroyers running around with, you know, all the aircraft and stuff like that, but they generally are reinforced with carriers. This strategy prioritizes the carriers. It also works for the strategic strike, forcing you, uh, your aircraft to attack the carriers, which is indeed extremely useful. Because if you kill their carriers off, you're probably killing like 11 aircraft off. And if you can stack enough things to try and kill the carriers, you can just kill their carriers. And most people run away before the carriers blow up. So now you're taking an entire fleet off the board. So bear that in mind that, albeit some people may just stick around to try and kill you anyway or do as much damage because you're killing their carriers, uh, you're going to knock out carriers pretty quickly with the help of this. So it is actually a very useful ship, and you see it a lot in fleets nowadays in uh, literally just the role to put corvettes on it to try and kill carriers. With that being said, you are sat back row, so you don't need to worry too much about sort of any of the armor or anything like that to start off with. So you can go straight into the strategies. You have five slots to play with, technically four, because the chances are you are taking the strategy here. So you have four left. Highly recommend picking up the hit rate here, the double RTB, and depending on what you're running, uh, you can actually ignore the target lock-on speed. For the most part, you can ignore it anyway because you're prioritizing carriers, which means that there's, what, five carriers in a fleet max at any given point. Uh, yes, you can get more, but for the most part, you're going to see five carriers, which means that you don't need them to lock on particularly quickly because what you're going to be putting on here are things like levies and that kind of cellular defenders or any of those corvettes that are big alpha damage potential that are going to hurt carriers a hell of a lot is what you're going to put on here so you don't need the lock on speed because for one once they're locked onto the carrier they don't lose the lock of the carrier they're just going to keep shooting at it until it dies and because of the hp and stuff like that it's going to take a while so you don't need the lock on speed because it's Okay, you could say, argue that it's going to target the second carrier and the third carrier faster. In my personal experience and opinion, I don't think it's necessary. The RTB, on the other hand, is necessary, especially if you are running levy. Uh, this will help it out a lot, and it does act as sort of like a cooldown to Corvettes. You then have um, hit rate, definitely take that. And I'd probably suggest the damage here. The evasion is nice, but not necessary. The only thing that currently uses a missile that you need to worry about at the current moment in the game that does AA damage is the Sandrake. And that's only if it's getting attacked, I believe, that missile. It's a counter-attack. Uh, crap. Yeah, don't ask. It's weird. So, yeah, you can probably ignore this. Going uh, for the hit rate first, double RTB and the damage, leaving you one slot left for that strategy. If people aren't running the um, carriers and stuff like that, which I just can't imagine what server people aren't running carriers in, uh, at that point, pick up the log, lock on speed. But yeah, you're probably always going to be running this strategy. So after that, depending on whether you need... well. Depending if you need the strike, 
ideally you run the strike off an actual carrier, CV3K or a Solar Whale or the Marshall Crooks for the uh, strategic strike level three, and then the increased bonuses and stuff like that. However, if you are going to run it off the Jaeger, you can pick up the strategic strike here. I recommend the attack radar on here. You only have the two slots uh, anyway which is fine because the multi-target attack you're probably going to ignore for the most part. Yes, it's useful because you can pin down multiple fleets and stop them moving, but at the same time you're splitting your damage potential up uh, within your strike. So, personal opinion, I wouldn't run it. There are situations where it is useful, though, and I do you know, understand that. I then recommend hitting the integrated battery system to pick up the uh, hit rate against fighters corvettes. Like I said, it's back row, so the chances are you're going to get attacked by things like Vitas more frequently and that kind of stuff. So having you know the ability to potentially defend itself, even if it's only maybe 5k, 6k, 7k damage over a four-minute battle, uh, may help out your anti-air against that uh Again, you could probably ignore this hit rate for the most part because I just don't think it's enough of a boost to actually make this thing hit. So bringing up the cooldown and the damage and the hit rate against fighters' corvettes will be enough, I believe, to help it with some of the anti-air potential. At that point, I'd probably move over to the armor system, picking up both of the ship HP, and I would probably be picking up the uh, energy res and the physical res here as well, ignoring the crit resistances for the most part. And lastly, finishing off with cruising speed and a single warp speed, bringing you up to a fairly you know, decent speed, considering it's a cruiser. So, the anti-ship type. We will jump into the technical route here to show that off, because I can see a bit more of it there. Uh, so here, unfortunately you can't really talk about it because I still can't like click on enhancement systems and stuff like that. What I do know is this basically has the same or almost very similar heavy cannon uh, from the Eris, but basically on a cruise and you got two of them this time, which means you probably upgrade it the same way as the heavy cannon Eris, where you're literally trying to take all the hit rates, the one um, attack upgrade that uh, allows it to shoot fast but lowers your hit rate uh, but if you can hit rate stack enough it should be all right uh, this is back row as well so you don't have to worry about the armor system straight off the bat you can go straight into its damage output after the bow mounted system though i recommend the armor system and then the integrated the exact same way as the uh the base jaeger and I'll talk a bit about the command system because it's the same command uh, stuff, I believe, as the Heavy Cannon Error. So we'll go look at that while I talk about it. And again, probably double cruising speed and a single warp there. Don't personally recommend it. I've obviously not tested it out myself, but um, I've heard it's got like even worse hit rate issues than the Heavy Cannon Eris. So it's potentially one to just ignore. However... If we do look at our frigates here, and we look at the HC Carillion, we can get a grasp of its command system. So it has this. Combat insertion. When the fleet is not the enemy's main target in a combat in situation, it can prioritize attack on five minus to one targets with a lower HP. I wonder if that upgrades it. Attack on four to one target with a lower HP. Why is that decreasing when you're in... Either way, basically, in a flanking fleet, which isn't being attacked by the target that it's attacking, it will prioritize ships with a low HP. This, in a certain situation, could be extremely powerful and extremely strong, so it's potential that you need to run or possible that this being ran uh, could become quite meta in that flanking damage fleet. You'd have your standard tank fleet, and then in your damage fleet you would have this or the Jaeger as your flagship. When you're going in, you're going to target the lowest HP first. If you're lucky, those lowest HP first could potentially be things like carriers. If your main tank fleet is anti carrier is like mostly anti-carrier or anti-supercap you're going to be dropping those down their hp down 
lower than the rest and then this flanking fleet's going to come in and they're all that entire fleet is going to target their carrier that lowest hp carrier if it is you know the carrier with the lowest hp in the enemy fleet so potentially really really strong and it actually gives a reason to potentially run the HC Jaeger. Uh, again, it is untested at the current moment. Uh, I would have to confirm that by testing it. I don't currently have it, so I'm waiting on people to potentially test it and give me the uh, sort of battle reports and stuff so I can go through and give you guys an update. But yeah, so the Jaeger, the base variant, really, really useful, really good, considered almost meta nowadays, and the anti-ship type, potentially very strong, in the right situation with the command system upgrades. So, there you go. That's it for the Jaeger. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.